Howdy. How is everyone tonight? You got everybody ready? Today, we're on Revelation chapter 20 still, part two, of at least three, maybe four parts. <laughs> um, there's a lot of information regarding the Millennium Kingdom. And just so you guys understand this, I'm going to read... I'm going to read to you what the book of Revelation tells us about the Millennial Kingdom. You ready? Revelation chapter 20, verses 6 through 7. Blessed and holy is the one who has part in the first resurrection, for over these the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison. That's it. That's all there is to it. That's all the millennial, all the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation says about the millennial kingdom. Two verses. Although the first verse it doesn't really say much about it, except you know it's just kind of a blessed are those who are part of the first, not the second. Yada yada yada. So I mean, I want to be blessed. Um, tonight we're going to be covering the kingdom itself, what it's going to be like. It's a couple different aspects we're going to go over. Just as a refresher, we have to remember the Millennial Kingdom is filled with three different persons. You have Christ himself, you have those who have their glorified bodies and minds, and you have your fleshies. I'm going to continue to call them that. You have your people who still have sin. And that's it, as far as people goes. So you have three different people types. And... I don't know if the glorifieds are going to have a little glow to them, if they're all going to wear, you know, white togas. I don't know if they're going to be distinguishable from anybody else, or if they're just going to look like someone who was 35 years old. I honestly, I don't know. It doesn't tell us exactly. But a glorified body, you'd think there'd have to be something uniquely different about it. And it didn't just look like someone who's stuck at age 30, 33, 35, somewhere in there, roughly. You know, I mean, it doesn't stand to reason. That it'd be like, it's a glorified body. It's going to be better, right? I think it's going to be better. You know, maybe everyone with perfect body and rock hard abs, you know, and like maybe they're the glorifieds. I don't know. I want everyone to understand something when we're talking about the millennial kingdom. Okay? Everything that I'm going to tell you guys and I'm going to teach you guys, it is based off what the Bible says exactly what it says not based off other denominations theology or you know I'm not going to spiritual nothing's getting spiritualized it's whatever it says is what I'm going to tell you it says that's what I'm going to that's what I believe I don't going to spiritualize any of this stuff metaphors are metaphors and metaphors are obviously metaphors everything else when it says this will happen I have no reason to doubt it'll be anything other than what it says it's not something like, oh, it just means... Like, no. What does it say? That's what it means. Exactly what it says. So I just want to clear that up. Because in the Millennial Kingdom, since Revelation says so little about it, you guessed it, we got to go through the rest of the Bible to get it. And I heard a statistic, and I'm going to try to remember it. I think at least two or three times the kingdom is mentioned in almost every single book of the Bible. I mentioned at least once in every single book of the Bible. Now, what we have to distinguish here is the kingdom is not heaven. Heaven is a kingdom, yes. It's God's kingdom. But think of the prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, give us, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, you know. You go through the whole thing, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Okay? If his kingdom wasn't going to come here, it wouldn't say, thy kingdom come. It says, thy kingdom come, because your kingdom, we're going to have here. That's why it says it. Make sense? I mean, if this is a kingdom we're just going to go to, then why would we even bother praying for it to come? Why would he teach us that prayer? That makes no sense. Does Christ contradict himself? No. Not once. Not ever. So the kingdom is a literal place. It is a 
era, it is a time frame. In the Old Testament, it's merely referred to as an age because the time, the length of time was not established yet. It was not established until the Millennial Kingdom. Now, John doesn't say a whole lot about the Millennial Kingdom because the rest of the Bible already said it. And he knew the rest of it. It wasn't in a nice, neat, little, tidy package, you know, like we have right now, a Bible. But he knew the Scriptures. He studied the Scriptures. All the apostles did. They knew them. I mean, I firmly believe, you have a hard time convincing me, they didn't know it. Not that they had to. They had Christ. They had the words and teachings and experience of Christ. They didn't need the Old Testament, you know. But if you ever actually read the Bible, you go through it, you'll notice how often they quote it. They quote the prophets. They quote a lot of the Old Testament. Well, how could they do that if they didn't know it? True, it could be divine inspiration, and it is divine inspiration to a degree, or it is flat out, but I mean, I think they still knew the scriptures. And when they quoted somebody, I think they knew they were quoting Isaiah, Daniel, whoever. So, the question we have right now, what does kingdom mean? Well, the fact that it's an earthly kingdom is pretty much one of the biggest focuses of debate. People, when you read the Bible, anytime it refers to that kingdom, Christ's kingdom, it is a separate kingdom from God. Because heaven is God's kingdom. Christ being God, it's also his kingdom too, but the fact that they're separate, Christ will have an additional one, which is where we set up the rule and reign on earth. Now, why will there be, why will there be a separate kingdom? Well, if you look at it, we have those, as far as humans go, we have those two distinct types, the glorifieds and the fleshies. Why are there people of flesh still in the world? Why do they exist? Well, they didn't die. They made it to the end of tribulation. So is Christ going to kill them? No. He could kill them and give them glorified bodies. We should be done with it. But he loses a benefit in that. And that benefit is, for the flesh that are still alive... When they procreate, that's more souls into the kingdom. He wants more. Why would he cut himself short? Yes, some are going to turn away, but many will come. So why wouldn't he? I mean, aside from being God, it's not something we can easily answer or fully comprehend anyway. So there's no point in actually losing, uh, stressing and losing sleep over these things like trying to figure out God. Flat out, he basically told us, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But basically said, I'm sorry, I made you, but you're too dumb to understand. Right now, be patient. All will be made clear later in time. But it's going to take some time. So the Christ of kingdom is an earthly kingdom. And there will be a point when heaven comes. We'll cover that in a week or two. But that's going to be a totally separate thing. There's five aspects of the kingdom of Christ that I want to cover with you guys, okay? I'm only going to do three tonight because it's kind of extensive. It's a lot of information. Um, It's the geography, the creation of the earth, the government, the daily life, and the religious practice. Now, I I, I went with religious practice because it's the most simplistic way to say it. Anyone who knows me knows I don't believe in religion of any sort, I'm not a religious person. I'm a God person. I don't have a religion. I have a relationship with God. A relationship with Christ is very, very different. Religions are something that man created. God did not create religion. God is not religious, so why am I? Or why would I be? It's just how I look at it, you know? So, I don't claim any denomination. I'm a follower of Christ. Actually, I told Siri to call me a servant of God. So that's what my name was. So if I ask her a question, she's like, no, servant of God. It's like a reminder. (laughs) All right, first, the geography. Well, we already know, we covered last week, that the geography will be established during the 75-day period, somewhere in there, because he has a lot of work to do. Um, I am going to read scripture, but I'm going to be bouncing all over the place again, as usual. So if you want, write them down. Um, I can also just give you guys my note. I can like try to make copies of notes or something like that for you guys if you guys want them. I um, might save you guys some writing or something like that. It's really up to you. Um, anyway, from Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 17. 
For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or to come or come to mind. We read that last week. You know, that's I wanted to reiterate that because it's the establishment. He's going to recreate the heavens and the earth. He's going to you're going to remold it. What's it going to look like? I have the foggiest idea. What I can tell you is we know where the highest point on the earth will be. So we did not. We were not given a detailed description and. I think we can make a safe assumption about it, if nothing else. If you look around the world, you can get on Google and type in beautiful places, those two words. You're going to find some of the most incredible pictures. Technology these days, 40, 50 megapixel cameras take breathtaking photos of places that we all wish we could go. Tropical environments, waterfalls, Nature, just some of the most incredibly beautiful places. Now, if that's how God made the earth look when he's not going to be living and dwelling on it, it's probably safe to say when he remakes it for his earthly kingdom, it's going to be better. It's just a hunch. Why would he make it uglier? And in my mind, he could make it the exactly the same standard, but I, eh, I just don't see it. Now, there's no biblical proof, no scripture that says he's going to make it better. But do we not know that God is the God of more than enough? He's a cattle on a thousand hills. If he has everything, why would he skimp? And as far as a physical creation goes, my mind almost cannot comprehend that he could make something to be enough. It's like he deserves more than even he can do and that's not even possible it's a contradiction to each other you know but it's like anything God can create I wish he would have more just because it, nothing is enough for him he's just to me in my mind he's that incredible he deserves an infinitesimal number times more than anything he will ever make that's just how I look at it I mean without him I would have no existence and for a supreme being that created me. It's like, he deserves it all. He just, he just deserves it all. Oh, I hate autocorrect sometimes. It corrected a word here, and I don't even know what I was trying to say anymore because it corrected that one word. Oh, recreate. Got it. Um, how many people in here know what Israel is supposed to look like? As far as its size, its shape, and everything. Anybody? Does everybody here know how big it is and what it actually looks like? All right. I'm going to pass around a picture. Oh, stop it. As soon as it cooperates with me. You guys see that little brown section right there? That's Israel. That's what it looks like. Present day. That's what it's supposed to look like. See how big it is? See all the air, other countries it invades? Now, that's not a perfect... It's not, probably not going to be exactly like that, but that's roughly how big it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be about the size of Saudi Arabia. That's no joke. They have... maybe 10% of what they're supposed to? Maybe? So how do I know that? I'm glad you guys asked. Y'all are on top of it today. Well, what we have right now, um, what it has right now is basically just, just the beginning. That's just it. This is what the end product will be. In Genesis 15, verses 18 through 21, it reads, On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land. From the river of Egypt, um, as far as the great river. Now that river basically cuts down one third. It's on the easternmost.